Can I see it again? Sure. I just want to feel that contour. Because, uh, oh, I'm just kidding. The, uh, <sighs> so what are we doing here? We're talking about guitars. I know you have a couple. Yeah, a few. Um, this one in particular, I want to show off just because I love the paint job. It's not really a paint job. What is it again? Like a vinyl cover? Yeah, type it's thing? an applique. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure that uh, they printed that on a separate um, printing device and then they Put it on. laminated it on the outside and then they clear coated over the outside of it. I know for sure that this is like a laminate vinyl thing because mm -hmm. uh, my friend who did, ended up doing the lacquer stuff, mm -hmm. he had to like flatten it out and then the guys sprayed it with lacquer and oh, they okay. did a really good job. It feels really sure. flawless, you know, but I always hated the neck and the headstock looked a little janky back in the day. I hope I still have yeah. pictures of it, yeah. but you want to start with this one? Cause we're eventually going to really talk about the Van Halen guitar. Yeah. But what the heck did you do to this thing? Well, one of the things that was really important when I started looking at this guitar is, is that there were some chips around the edge. Yeah. And the chips were indicative of some lack of adhesion for the clear coat. And when I started looking at it and, and, and touching it a little bit further, I found that I could actually, I found that I could actually pull up the clear. So I know that it wasn't um, prepped correctly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I said, uh, I asked you if you wanted me to fix it. And among the other things that we did is, is we changed the shape of the neck. It's yeah. such a different guitar now. It feels yeah. so good to play. Yeah. Yeah, and then with a good setup in that, and then, you know, I went through the process of um, cleaning up the headstock, which uh, involved uh, sanding everything down, getting rid of the previous text on there, mm -hmm. and then going out and buying the um, nickel metal plated um, BC Rich emblem. Which looks beautiful. Yep, and then um, painted it black, and then clear coated it several times to get it nice and flat. And Do you know the story of when I bought that? It was off of like eBay or something, and they said it was a USA BC Rich. And when I got it, I'm like, this is definitely not a USA. No, it wasn't. In the top, it even said made in the USA, but it was like a weird font that didn't match the guitar or something. It just yeah, was so it was. Obvious. Everything was um, not the way it should have been, uh, especially not a good guitar from the factory. So I kind of got taken, but I didn't pay a ton <laughs> for it. But now it's probably worth five times as much as I paid for well, it. Well, I, I, I have a hard time judging that. Um, I just like to make things look good. Yeah. It's, it's nice when you just, like, do it for the art, you know? Sure. And recently, I think um, this was one of the first guitars that I did for you yep. where I changed the neck shape, which, um, you I know, was nervous about that a little bit because if you screw up a neck, it's really hard to put the wood back on. So. <laughs> yeah, you can't. What do you, what do you use for that? So um, I have um, a list of all of the guitar neck shapes, or at least the vast majority of them, everything from Eric Clapton to Eddie Van Halen, um, all of the wizard necks, um, Gibson necks, everything like that. And they have a specific shape. And what you typically do is, is you establish the, the minor shape here with the thickness and then control the corners. And then you also do it up here. So, you know, about the 13th or 14th fret and around the first or second. And then you essentially match it in between there. And I go to the trouble of using um, flat... Um, sanding sticks and I change you know from you know like 60 grit or 80 grit all the way up to six or eight hundred so and a sanding stick is like a sandpaper on a spindle thing that spins actually it's a chunk of metal extrusion so it's aluminum extrusion it's very flat okay so and that's the only way that you can keep it that way and then oh, obviously you have to change the contours and in here which is the 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 centrally the straight section is one thing to do relatively easily, but then you have to blend it up yeah. around the corners of the neck, and it can't feel weird up here. Yeah. That's interesting when I started studying the different kinds of necks that they have, and I'm like, oh, I guess I have one of each here. You know, mm -hmm. I, even my new guitar that I want you to work on on the neck, I'm almost having second thoughts. It's that Les Paul Jr. Oh, yeah. The neck is so fat, but I'm wondering if you strip away at it, if it's going to affect it in a way that might, I don't know, might not be something I want in the end, because it's... Well, Such a big clunk of a cl clunky guitar. Right. Maybe that's what it's supposed to be. I don't know. What do you think? Well, I think that we can incrementally do it. Okay. So I don't Shave have to go here. straight to a wizard. Okay. Neck, which is the thinnest of the thin. <laughs> this necks. feels like an Ibanez. What the yeah. heck? Yeah. And and the other thing that you have to consider is is when you're changing the thickness of the neck, you're changing the stiffness of the neck. Yeah. 
And one of the things that can happen is, is that you can release um, stress in the wood that will tend to make the neck react differently with the truss rod. Which makes this guitar play better now, because I told you it felt stiff, Yeah. but now it doesn't have that stiffness. So I wonder well, if that's because Well, I think this that. is the neck that I also straightened out the fretboard. Yeah, it, I think so too. I think uh, over time, especially when you store your guitar in your car, which you should never do. Guilty. Um, especially in Minnesota. What will happen is, is that um, this... Uh, fretboard is a separate piece of wood, obviously, and it's bonded with uh, aliphatic resin. So, you know, essentially white glue um, and yellow glue, I guess, if you consider that. Um, but what will happen is under tension, this will actually creep is, is the term that they have. So when you heat up that joint and if the glue is thick enough, it'll actually start to... to Get creepy. Yeah. To, to move. Wow. So in that particular case, then you have to fight it further with the truss rod. Oh. So now you're tightening up the truss rod to straighten out the neck. Now that makes the neck react differently. Okay. So when you try to bend, normally when you bend a string, the guitar neck will slightly um, bend with the string. Mm -hmm. Well, now you've made the um, truss rod a much more um, stronger force inside the neck and it's hard to bend against it. I hate that feeling. So the, the obvious thing to do is, is to reheat this to hold the neck in place right here to reheat the glue underneath there, which I do with blankets. Mm. And then I clamp it in a fixture and then cover it up overnight and then remeasure it the next day. You know, and this is obviously with all the strings out and, and um, you know, without any tension on the, the truss rod. And then I try to get it as straight as I can. And I have... Um, uh, tools that go in between the frets that um, actually measure the flatness of the um, the neck right there so that I can tell if the neck is bowed at all mm -hmm. without going off the frets. Because sometimes the frets can be compensated for, you know, if the, the guitar is bent a certain way and you may want to flatten out the fretboard. If you don't straighten the wood first, then you end up grinding like, you know, these frets much more further down and these much more further down to yeah. to make it flat. The less you can uh, grind away at frets, the better, right? Yeah. And so once I was able to do that, then it kind of freed up the tension in the neck. That's cool. And it just it feels so it... much better now. It feels playable, finally. Yeah. So you had to basically kick the cheapness out of this guitar. Yes. And now it's, it's like a higher level, mid to higher level guitar. Yeah. And that was really the focus of, you know, why I got into working on guitars in the first place is... You know, I couldn't afford the $5,000 guitars, and I couldn't afford all of the associated labor that was into a really good guitar. Yeah. So I started learning how to do it myself. And, you know, in this particular case, because we changed the shape of the neck back here, too, I painted the whole neck. So the whole neck is clear-coated, and I always use, um, you know, the acrylic enamel. Yeah. And um, I can get it very thin and, you know basically I say every time that I put three coats of clear on it, I take two of them off. So I have to get it pretty flat first because the thickness of one coat of clear is only five thousandths. Okay. And that's actually thinner than lacquer finishes. I usually hate the way lacquer finishes feel, especially when you're out on a sunny day. Like mm -hmm. all the practical stuff matters to me when yeah. you're on stage and you can't slide because Sticky. your hand's getting caught. This yeah. thing doesn't do that. So. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Just the look of that headstock, though, the black and gold is just yeah. my favorite thing ever. I love it. I love the 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 look of the the, <laughs> the logo? Uh, BC Rich logo. From yeah, the, the way side. it tapers off. Yeah. That's so cool. Not to mention the lovely lady. Yeah, of course. Cat eyes. I don't know what it is, but I connect with that uh, artist a lot. Mm -hmm. And I heard from somebody that a lot of sociopaths like that guy's artwork. So I don't know what that says, but... I don't know. I like it. I don't think I'm a sociopath. Okay, I feel better. So the big reveal of the day is that you took... A lot of people are going to be bummed because they liked the old... Because I used the that guitar in a Megadeth instructional video. And oh. everybody... Or a Van Halen one as well, ironically. And people are like, hey, that guitar is sweet. It was gray yeah it was a gray metal gray. flake yeah and I, and I remember it was real bottom heavy it had this weird feel to it yeah it's a mahogany guitar and oh man the thing's a brick so what did you do i took a lot of weight off first of all okay. i changed the shape of the i mean that was the whole primary reason behind this i wanted to experiment with some paint jobs 
And then I wanted to, you know, fe- um, change the um, way it balanced on your lap. Yeah. I mean, it was so body heavy that the neck would fly up. <laughs> That's the worst feeling when you're practicing. Yeah. You kind of hold it up. And usually you... it's the other way around. So what I ended yeah, up doing is, is at the pivot point of the, um, of the guitar, I took as much weight as I could off here and then back here. Okay. So, so you shaved I, it down, put it on a diet? <laughs> a diet. Yeah, I think I took off, you know, in some places, I think I took off like a quarter inch of wood. Whoa. And not only that, I also shaped the outside of the guitar too, so I took the weight off the outside. It it balances better now. Yeah. You know, you'll be able to see it when we get there. The so. biggest bummer is when you buy a guitar online. I got to quit being so dramatic. The biggest bummer. There's way worse things <laughs> in life. Yeah. But you get this guitar that you just loved looking at a screen. Then you put it on and it does this or this. Yeah. Everyone's probably screaming, let's see that damn guitar. Let's see the damn guitar. Let me get this out So of I'll put up before bit. pictures. Okay. And then uh, should I do a close-up of my phone here? Yeah. Whoa, my three favorite colors. <laughs> I'll just do a quick scan. Yeah. Oh my God, look at that thing. Wow. That and, is night and day. Yeah, from what it used to be. Um, what's funny is I'm looking at it right now. Can I hold it? Sure. And I have that other Van Halen guitar with the tape, you know, the silver and black guitar. Sure, yeah. So the second you pulled this out, I'm like, wow, that's some nice tape, but it's actually in the paint job. Yeah. But so the look, way you did it sounds insane. But look yeah. at that finish. Holy. It's like sparkly white too. Yeah. It's not just white. So this is um, a very specific wow. brand of automotive paint that's made for custom painting. You'll see the really high-end cars <laughs> painted with this paint. What's, it's, what's uh, so different Cosmosky. about it? It's called um, Whoa. It, House of Color. So I actually knew um, John Kosmoski, and I started painting my first boat in, uh, I'm going to say 1987, something like that. Let me know if you like the setup, and we can I, always adjust it. I set it on my lap, and it just balances. Yeah. Well, wow. that was the whole idea. So before, I, if... <sighs> feels almost like it's half as heavy as it used to be, or three quarters uh, as heavy. Yeah, maybe three quarters. And it used to go, ooh. Yeah, exactly. Damn. Not only does it feel good on my lap, balance, but the the relief on the, st- everything, f- these feel like eight gauge strings. No, they're nine and a half. I have <sighs> my set of Mike yep, G that's good. strings. I have my own little compartment. That yeah, you, exactly. There's something about that half. It's just not too light, not too heavy. Yeah. I just can't believe how it, like... Looks good in your eye. My st- <laughs> I have a student who's going to be super jealous. Well, he yeah. has a lot of Van Halen stuff on his sure. of his own, but this is next level. If you look at the standard red Van Halen guitar... It's a lot yeah, it's, less black. It's this color. Yeah. And what's interesting about this design is it's a negative. So rather than having the final color being red, the final color is black. So it's almost like reverse Spider-Man, yeah. like where it's the dark side. Exactly. Nice. I like that. This should be the Spider-Man then. Yeah. Right? What are they called? The, is it Black Spider-Man? I don't even know uh, what they call it, but wow. This will be the Black Spider. Yeah. So um, one of the couple of the other things that I did, and you'll see that in there, is, is I put some extra shielding in this. So I played it, and the single coils actually are not too noisy now. Okay, because it used to pick up yeah. a lot of stuff. So single coil, these together as a humbucker, single coil, these together as a, I don't know what. <laughs> and then this one right here has phase shifting, so these are a Okay, I was going to say that phase shifting from the angled humbucker can mm-hmm. be controlled with that, huh? Yeah, it wow. can be. And this is not the, the top of the line stuff, but it's got the brass screws, so it's the, the solid middle of the road. I like that. And I actually took this uh, saddle out, and because it's hardened, I had to file the heck out of it with my um, 600 grit diamond uh, needle file. Oh, and, really? And then I polished it. So hopefully, because of bending it, you're not going to fatigue this string and break it. Well, the problem with a lot of cheaper bridges is that they get stripped. You know, I'll be yeah. a day before a concert and I'll try mm-hmm. to adjust it. And I'll just keep turning. I'm like, yeah. no, now I got to use a different guitar. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's crazy. So this is the original Kramer. I was able to salvage that. That's good. 
And it's interesting because this is on a, um, um, I don't think it's vinyl. It, it may actually even be ebony. Really? Yeah, so you see here, it's got the, the thickness of the material in there. Wow. Can you see that? Yep. So, and it was chipped before and damaged. So what I did was, is I went around the outside edge, I sanded everything, and then I filled in every blank that I could. And all of these, um, the truss right adjustment and the rear cover here, uh, they were repolished. So they came out really nice, got rid of all the scratches. The one thing you'll notice about that, this is a little bit different other than the weight reduction. Yeah. Is, is I um, did a really sharp, and this is a continuous radius rather than just a facet. Okay. And then around here, so it should no feel a little meant, bit better. Okay. I also inset this. So um, I love how the four red lines come off of that cover. Yeah. That looks yeah, badass. Yeah. I cannot believe I have the black Spider-Man version of a Yeah, Vandy I don't think guitar. there's another black one out there because this was just my idea to do a, a negative of the red. Band yeah, because a lot of people have just recreated the originals, mm -hmm. but this is like its own thing. That's mm -hmm. why I like the silver and black one, too, because everyone's like, I've never seen that before. But. Yeah, and so this is that high-end automotive paint, <laughs> and the first color, and you'll see that Michael bring that up, is, is that um, you know the first color is white. And that's a bright white, and it's a base coat white. And then I used um, the, the pearl and the mini flake. And so that's in there. So when it, when it flattens out and it catches the light, it'll just shine like you won't believe. Wait till I'm on stage with it. Yeah, and this is the blackest black. And <laughs> this red right in here, this is a very expensive color. So if you ever buy that and you want to do something about that, we'll talk a little bit about how I did the paint job. It really just pops off the black so well, yeah. and obviously the white, but is there a name for that red? Did you already say? Um, the original color was blue blood, blue blood red. Oh, that's and confusing. And now, now it's called Euro red. Okay, blue but, blood red. But the interesting thing about it is all of the other paints, eh, they're pretty expensive, but the red was like twice as expensive. A pint of this paint is like $140. I hate to bring up numbers, but if someone did this from, you know, Gibson or Fender or in anywhere, Kramer, what, what do you think they would charge for something? An original paint job like that? Yeah. Well, the uh, fact that it's original paint job means that it took me a long time to do it, to think about the concept and to think about how I wanted it to end up. Mm -hmm. And that's really, you know, the amount of time. And you're never going to get that back labor-wise. But, you know, had this been in production and they've been building, you know, 10 of these, it would probably be like $400, $500, something like that for just the paint. So you're probably going to send in a guitar like it used to be, the gray one, and mm -hmm. have all that work done. It's got to be well over $1,000. Oh, easily. Okay. Oh, I'd, I'd say even... A couple. Oh. Oh. So so the deal is is that, yeah, you could you could say that, you know, modifying the body and you know, doing the upgrades to the electronics and doing the proper amount of shielding and grounding and changing the shape on the neck and then putting an original paint job on it. Yeah, it'd probably be close to $1,000. I bet you today it'd be way more, but yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, the thing is, is that... You're being modest. Well, yeah, so I, I <laughs> painted my first custom paint job on the side of my dad's uh, wheelbarrow. <laughs> I thought you were going to say GTO or something. No. Like Wilbur, I love that. No. So I was like uh, 10 years old or 11 years old or something, and I saw this. You know, I used to go to Minnesota Dragways and see all the, the car racing stuff, you know, the drag racing stuff, and they had these really cool custom paint jobs. I mean, they had things like spider webs, and they had freak dots, and they had um, My all dad this was other into that stuff. All that other stuff, and one of the things that they had was fish scales. So what I did was is... You know, if you take your if you take your knuckles here and you draw around them, you get like these rounded things. Oh, that's well, what that and is. And then what you do is is you paint them and you shade them as you paint them, and then overlap them and go forward and paint them and overlap it. You know, and you get this effect like fish scales. So that was my first paint job. Was it kind of a silvery pink color? <laughs> no, it was black because that's the only color I had, and it wasn't with professional painting equipment. You know? Okay, so you had to do it the old-fashioned way. Yeah, and and to be perfectly honest, you know, it, this is not an easy paint job to do. 
Um, I struggled with it in a lot of ways. and, and it sounded like hell. Like you would wake up the next day and something <laughs> overlapped wrong and you had to peel yeah. it off and start yeah. over or what? I, I think I retaped this thing probably about seven times. Do you think, though, that's what makes it even more interesting? Because I see little parts that don't line up exactly, and I actually mm. like that. Yeah, and, and things are not lined up. Like, for example, like this stripe right in here, you have to look at it really close. I put this tiny little red stripe in I it. see it. And, and that was just, you know, Deb told me, you know, my wife, she says, why are you doing that? He says, nobody's ever going to see that. And I go, Mike will see it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the other thing, too, down here is, is on the original Van Halen guitar, you have this down here. Well, I moved it a little bit more, and it's kind of my uh, homage to... Your devil horns. Devil horns. Oh, I see it now. Yeah. And it's funny, the way the white is coming up, it almost looks like a mini little guitar underneath here coming yeah. up. Yeah, and if you look at... It's not just the faces, but, you know, if you look at the edges... Yep, the edges are really interesting. The edges are really interesting, and wow. you can see the way these stripes kind of... You see this right in here? This is overlapping all three colors. And this is all done with um, two different thicknesses of tape. Yep. So I got the quarter-inch tape and then half-inch tape. But, you know, for this, I just overlapped it and, and you know... That's like an inch wide almost, right. huh? yeah. Okay. And so like this in here, mm -hmm. there was a, um, a piece of tape here. And this, this tape is special tape, too. It's called um, fine line tape. And it's okay. a vinyl tape. And it provides these nice crisp, crisp edges. Yeah. You can't get this with masking tape or anything. Oh, I and do then, that whenever I paint my studio room, you yeah. know, but I never get the tape off right. I always, yeah. I'm too impatient and I tear it off before it dries, right? Oh, so. okay. Um, like, for example, in here, you know, I go in there with actually a knife oh. and, and I cut through the tape that overlapped all of it. Wow. And so, you know, each time you put a layer of paint on here, it's about three thousandths of an inch. So three thousandths of an inch is about three quarters of the thickness of a piece of paper. Really? So if you look at this area in here, there's probably, you know, six coats of clear that were sanded down to two. There is two coats of black. There's two coats of red. There's two coats of white. And there's two coats of clear with the sparkles in it. Okay. So, so the white didn't up, have the sparkles. You had to add that with a clear. Yeah, you okay. add that with a clear. Nice. So in, in this particular case, I got, you know, the special kind of, I don't know if they can see this. Can you see the sparkles? Um, I can see it from here, but I think my phone will can pick it up better. Yeah. So, and all that is is to get an effect. You know, the, on the regular Van Halen guitar, they just paint it white. But, you know, that was my, you know, let's do something a little bit interesting because I know you're always flashing your guitar in the camera. <laughs> That's why one time I almost wanted to buy a mirror guitar for live oh. on stage because the spotlight yeah. hits it. It gets a little annoying, though, if you do you too know much that, of that. You uh, know that one uh, Telecaster, the Dragon Telecaster from Jimmy Page yeah. when he played in the Yardbirds? Yep. That had, um, um, it was like this mirrored... Um, pick guard? Yeah, it was the mirrored pick guard, but I'm trying to remember what it was. It was like, um, it had uh, like some kind of, they call it a, like a moray effect... But anyway, um, I always thought that was interesting, too, because he had those little mirrors, those round mirrors on it, too. That's right. That, oh, live with a spotlight, that's just yeah. got to be blinding for sure. people. You know who had the most blinding guitar ever? Paul Stanley. I saw them live, and he has this uh, Iceman guitar with cracked mirrors all over oh. it. So it looks really badass, but if you're like in the beam of it, it's just too much to handle, you know? Is it really cracked glass? Yeah. It's like glass that's been cracked with patterns so mm. it looks it just basically reflects anything so those stage lights get crazy mm. i'm just like giddy like a kid right now and i know how my dad felt whenever he like wanted to paint his cars back in the day because i'm looking right now at two of the most beautiful guitars i've probably ever seen you know mm -hmm. uh didn't start out that way and they're right here <laughs> because of i don't know it's so crazy to know that you've played such a big part in all this yeah this this neck has also been modified. I don't know if you noticed that or not. I noticed that, and I also noticed that the uh, edge of it, which I used to hate because it was so sharp, it was like a mm -hmm. Telecaster. It used to cut into my forearm, is totally contoured off yeah. now. Almost yeah. like those modern guitars, the Kiesels and all that. Sure. So the one thing about the back here, too, is is I took from all the way around here, all the way around. So that to wasn't there corner. at all. That was not there at Hold all. Hold on, i got to capture that. So. Yeah, and that's the other thing that's... I don't think anybody would do this unless they had a real love for doing this particular one because... Can I see it again? Sure. I just want to feel that contour. Because... Um, oh, I'm just kidding. The, uh, 
getting that edge to go all the way around. You know, people usually do a router, but if you look at it, it's changing thickness all the way around. It's thin here, it opens up, and then it gets thin in a cool, it looks like a. And not only that, the angle changes. All the way here. Yeah, the angle changes. Yeah. So it's. So it's it's not just like, yeah, it, it. Looks like it's gonna just fit right into your ribs yeah, perfectly. Like that was that. the whole point, you know, getting it yep. at the shallower angle and then going around the side to take weight out. You know, if I didn't love this paint job so much for this lady, not yeah. that it's a paint job, but uh, this graphic, I'd probably want to do that to this guitar, but yeah. I don't want to. Yeah. I like the way yeah. it is, you know. This thing, this is just like one of, you know, we can do all kinds of neat stuff, you know, and and I'm so thankful that you know I met you and you allowed me to work on some of your guitars and develop some of my skills. And the whole idea behind this, you know, like we were talking earlier, I got into working on guitars because I couldn't afford the time that manufacturers charge for when they make the guitars right. You know, like all of the extra labor and effort they go into making the frets feel good, making them flat, um, making the action just the way you want it, all of those things, you know, I wanted to touches. learn how to do. So you fin- you not only do the gritty deep work, but you do the finishing touches because sure. yeah. you work on cars too. Yeah, that's your main thing, right? Yeah, so. I mean, for years, um, I've just been involved in everything technical. And when I was a little kid, they used to get me appliances so that I could tear them apart and figure out how they worked. Here's my dishwasher. You know, figure it out. That was exactly right. I mean, for that- my fifth birthday or sixth birthday, they were giving me you know old toasters and things wow. with the cords cut off. Wow. So you'd be a real uh, cheap person to buy gifts for. Absolutely. Anything broken, give it to me. <laughs> there are some people out there that have, you know, it seems like a, a sixth sense about mechanical things. Yeah. But really, you're talking about a person who's wrecked a lot of stuff. Okay. <laughs> so the experience really comes from screwing stuff up rather than, you know, fixing well, stuff. Look what it led to, a life of engineering, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was a mechanical engineer. Yeah. I graduated from the Uni- University of Minnesota in 1979. And um, became a PE in 87, and a PE is a professional engineer. It's kind of like the bar exam for engineering. Okay. And So uh, the snooty engineers. You're better than yeah. normal engineers. I see. Um, what the test and the experience guarantees is, is that you're very well um, practiced in the engineering. You're not just theory. You've done it. You've well, done the yeah, work. And, and that's the thing is, is you can't even take the exam until you've had five years of experience. Okay. So, so they really put you through the ringer. Yeah, they do. And back then, you know, you were given uh, 10 problems in the morning and 10 problems in the afternoon, and you had to do four of one and four of the other. And it took over eight hours. It took, on average, an hour to do each problem. Dang. So now that it's just you know, multiple choice and it's incremental. <laughs> you could take you it know, online. To solve a problem. Wow. Yeah. Now you definitely could afford any nice guitar that you want, but strangely you don't have to because you fix up not cheaper guitars, mid-range guitars, I would say. Yeah, but that's that's really my desire is, is yeah. I like working with my hands. I've been retired for three years now, two, two and a half years, something like that. And um, I'm really enjoying retirement. So I only do what I feel like doing now. How dare you have fun in life? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're a good example of, you know, using your mind and building a life and doing the things you love. I think you enjoyed engineering. It's got to be tough if you every day you go to work, you hate doing it. Then you get to the end, and I don't know if it's the same experience, you know, as far as enjoying yeah. Um For me, because I'm, I consider myself to be a lifelong learner, you've heard that phrase from a lot of people. Yeah. Um, Usually successful people have that mindset. Yeah, and, I, and for me, you know, I'm the practical guy. I'm the guy behind the scenes that does the the meat and potatoes of the the engineering and the technology, and and that's just what I enjoy. I like working with my hands. I like working with my mind. Um, a three D printer and a three D router and and some good work woodworking equipment. You know, I could pretty much do what I want. Sweet. Well, thanks, Greg. I never said your name in this whole podcast, but I'll put it up on the screen. It's okay. Safe, so. All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks. Hopefully you enjoy like the nerdy side of guitar. I like to dive into oh, that once in a while. It's so much more nerdy than you know. Oh, it goes deep. <laughs> it goes deep. And if you went deep, I would have no idea what you're talking about. Like yeah. Half the time, I'm just bobbing my head even during sure. this conversation. So thank you for dumbing down the, yeah. the topic. So All right. See ya. See ya. We need something music. Da-da-da-da-da. Da-da-da-da.